Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. i got to swallow that ear bubble in my throat. <laughs> uh, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube, uh, of course, and uh, I'd like to... To wish you all Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, because we're almost there, right? Uh, at least Four Christmas, days, anyway. Five days. Um, yeah, just a couple more days here mm -hmm. away from Christmas, and um, this will actually be our last live broadcast of this year. That's so, right. So uh, we'll broadcast again in January, uh, and uh, we'll have one more show for this season. That's where we'll take a look at the drawings that we've done this season and uh, kind of do a quick critique. And you guys will be able to vote for which one you like the best. And uh, we'll do the same thing, of course. But tonight, there's going to be drawing that's going to take place, and Ashley's going to be doing the drawing, and he's sitting right over there. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing really well, Matt. Thanks for asking. Yeah, and I've I've got the festive lights behind him. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to see there, but it's red and green. It's supposed to look red and green. Kind of looks. That's right. Kind of looks a little scary, actually. It looks. Now that it I'm reminds it me of Tron camera. a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's uh, pretty neon. I've got on. If you can see it, I've got on dull, dull red right and dull green. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> and I'm wearing my festive sweater here, my my uh, Christmas sweater with Darth Vader on it. So uh, <laughs> I can see you can't see yeah. Darth Vader, but yeah, you can you see the little kinda, you can see the little stormtroopers. There, there's Darth Vader. And you can see his ship. There we go. <sighs> yeah. OK. That's so nice. anyway, uh, we're in the holiday spirit here. I, I hope Always. you are, too. Um, our drawing tonight is not going to be very holiday. -oriented, it's tropical. It's, tro be fun. Yeah, hey, it's, tropical. It's, it's the holidays it's everywhere. Right. Not just uh, where it's cold. Right. Right, exactly. So yeah, this one's for you guys who celebrate uh, Christmas or New Year in shorts. Yep. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, like always, uh, Ashley is going to be tasked to create a drawing inside of forty-five minutes. Uh, I have done five this season. This will be Ashley's fifth drawing, mm -hmm. and uh, the next—not next week, but the week after that—we're going to take a look at all of the drawings that we've done this season, as I've already mentioned before. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't, uh, or if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel, of course, and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, of course, you can wait around and see what happens here before you do that. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that uh, if you wanted to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, then you should check out the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses mm -hmm. on a variety of subject matter and media. And all of our courses include uh, logically sequenced videos and illustrated ebooks too that go along with each of the the course modules and there's also weekly live lessons so after we're done here on this broadcast um, I will continue the oil pastel uh, drawing that we're doing here just for members uh, all of our live lessons are recorded and they go all the way back to when I started streaming live back in 2012 so there are a lot of live lesson series there uh, waiting for you and uh, are available to all the members. There's also weekly critiques as part of the members minute and for the teachers There is a year-long curriculum for visual arts uh, And the curriculum is not just an order of lessons. It is that but it also includes all the instructional videos that you'll need Handouts art history examples. There's a lot that goes along with the uh, what we call the ultimate lesson plan Anyway, if you want to learn more about the program, there is a link in the description below. You can check it out for a week for free. And uh, of course, we would love for all of you to be members. And um, if you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, there's a link in the description below for that as well. And if you're not on the newsletter list, uh, that will put you on the newsletter list. So if uh, you click on that link, not only will you check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, but you'll also be on our newsletter list and you'll get sent all kinds of free lessons there to your email. Um, all right. Uh, I should also remind you that this is live, of course, and I've pushed something wrong here. There we go. Uh oh. Uh, this is live, of course, uh, on YouTube. So there is a chat box. You can, of course, post questions and comments and we'll do our best to answer them for you they don't have to be uh, about what we're doing tonight they can be anything art related if you do put your comment or question in all capital letters that will help me see it a little bit easier amongst all the other ones uh because the chat box gets going a little bit quick here on youtube especially um yeah oh also one more thing uh, the photo <laughs> reference that ashley is going to be working from tonight is found on the community tab at the youtube channel so if you click on my face uh, down in the bottom left-hand corner, I think uh, that will take you to the YouTube channel. 
and then you'll see the community tab. You can click on that community tab and you'll see the photo reference for this broadcast. And also all of the live lesson, or not live lesson, all the Getting Sketchy episodes that we've done this season. So if you wanna go back and watch those videos, those references are waiting for you there. All right, are you uh, ready, Con, yeah, I think so. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I've got my materials set up. We're gonna take a look at what my materials are and see what you have that's comparable or the same, and then we'll start drawing. All right, and... There's one more thing. One more oh, thing. Materials. One more, one more thing. Uh, I've linked to the materials <laughs> underneath the video. Those are affiliate links. So if you purchase through that, then um, we get a little bit of kickback from that, of course. Um, I think that's it. Uh, hello well, to everyone in the chat box, wherever you are in the world. I know there's people all over the world that watch this. Uh, if you want to shout out where you are, that'll be great. And I'll do my best to, to read those out as well. Um, all right, I think that's it. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Let's switch over. I'll we'll switch over there and get into this one. Brenda says mm -hmm. that she gave away a several gifts or uh, subscriptions to folks. Thanks for that, Brenda. Oh, wow. Pretty awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, so tonight we have a vertical composition. A lot of times we have horizontally oriented compositions just because it fills the screen well. So hopefully you can see my paper amongst all this white space. It's the whiter space. So starting with the paper, this is Canson uh, Bristol paper, and it is the smooth, yes, it's the smooth, not the vellum surface. Both feel pretty smooth, but this is the smoother of the two choices. We're going to be working with marker and ink tonight, or marker and pens. So um, I've brought my set. I've used these on the show before. Uh, my Molotov pen set. There's uh, four different sizes. I'll probably be using the two larger ones, even though our paper's not crazy large. Speaking of the paper size, I believe I believe this is four inches by seven point eight inches. Let's see. That's right. Four inches by seven point eight inches. Um, if you want to work in the same size or, or the same or similar proportion, this paper is the same proportion as the reference. So we can use um, the edges of the paper or the distance from the edges of the paper to our subject to help us place our subject. Now, for markers tonight, um, I have a variety, uh, or at least a choice of two. So we've got this set. It happens to be called the Dual Brush Pen Citrus Edition, and we are working mm. with a citrus fruit. Delicious. I know. It just worked out like that, so I went ahead and purchased it. Some of the markers are missing because they're already in my marker jar. These are the ones they're going to be using tonight. So, Was um, the, Were those next to the vegetables? The, ve the vegetable set? Yeah. They were all like tan and brown and... Yeah, dark red. Cream. Yeah, not... not yeah, right, dark red. Uh, the color of dirt. Yeah, that was a, yes. that was a nice set. That was dirt. A, that was a beautiful set. Dirt. What a great color. <laughs> <laughs> now, why, you know, uh, we have these uh, great Crayola colors, like 400, uh -huh. 500 different colors, macaroni and cheese. They're named right, everything. delicious. None of them are named dirt. Why is no, that? I don't know. So. I guess dirt comes in so many different colors. <laughs> right, that's what it is. So many different values All the of earth dirt. tones could be called dirt. All uh -huh. right, so I'm also going to be using a uh, Prismacolor premier markers these are alcohol based uh, but the tombow markers are water based so i'm going to be using these together actually mostly in separate areas but a little bit on top of one another because it doesn't matter we're sketchy over here at getting sketchy and we'll use uh, whatever materials whatever work. And whatever these there seem, is yeah whatever these seem to be the colors i need and there's the one oddball you might remember i had an oddball from uh two weeks ago when i was working in marker that one's and, really weird yeah though. look at this uh it's this is not the color it's faded out it's actually the color is called ruby and so it's pretty dark this is it and we're going to use that for our background look at that color card. look at yeah. look at how yeah, serious at, ashley and is it's there. crazy so these are the alcohol the alcohol-based markers, and these are the water-based markers over here. So we've got yellow chartreuse, ruby, which is um, is kind of the oddball. It's not a it's not a Prismacolor Premier marker. We've got cloud blue, which is actually a little bit violet, but it's called <laughs> cloud blue. Uh, brick beige. What? Aquamarine. How these is are... that brick anything? <laughs> I don't. It's like the mortar. It's like the mortar between the bricks. That's what okay. I'm. Thinking. That's right. what I'm telling Fair myself. Enough. How do you? Yeah. Where do you get that from? Uh, Brittany blue, which I love. It's kind of a grayish blue. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the uh, the Tombow markers are just. They're not even. They don't have colors listed on the markers. They are listed, are enumerated by number. I guess uh, delineated by number. So this is 133. So we're going to be using 133. I've called it light uh, y yellow green. So I'm just calling those by whatever their color name would be. On I like that the color better. wheel. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
It, it's interesting that. to see how the alcohol-based markers have even coverage yeah, compared, compared yeah. to the water-based markers. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? These mm -hmm. are now. Uh, I was, you know, these have a chisel tip, so these are just two marks, so it's a smoother mark. It's only two strokes in here. Right, but you can't Whereas see these, the lines. You and, really can't. Um, and, yeah. and on that topic, Ann asked, is there a quick and easy way to save a dried out alcohol marker? Um, gosh, I don't know, because I've got one that's drying out, an ultramarine blue right now. Right, like I think the it. quickest and easiest way is to go to the store and buy another one. Yep, just order another one, I, I wish guess. we knew. I wish we knew that, Yeah, I, I'm, but we don't. All right. Um, so let's see. I also have a. I have also. A, we're going to start with a pencil and eraser. So I've got a pink pearl eraser. A classic boy. That one is dirty. Look at that. Because that's how I like to erase with it, like this. Sometimes that's how we're going to be using it. Um, and I also have. A, I have also have a pencil with a pretty sharp point on it. But uh, you know, I, I try to sharpen my my point kind of long because Matt does that. And I was looking around in his drawer and I found this. Look at. The, can you believe yeah. he draws with this? Yeah. That was in my drawer. Can you believe that? Huh, I'm finding all kinds of stuff. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I oh, brought, I brought this. in the hood of my car. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay, there's no telling. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, nobody, nobody sharpens their it. pencil as long as Matt. So I thought I would yeah. uh, see if I could fool him. So this is. Uh, this oh, you're is... just messing with me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I this get it. This is not now. really his pencil. I'm so slow. Yeah, and I. <laughs> And I'm going to be using the Faber, just a Faber Castell F pencil because the F pencil just doesn't get enough love. So. F stands for fabulous. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to start with a fabulous pencil tonight. All right. Uh, I want to do a great drawing tonight. So you can bring up that timer, but I go ahead and tell you I'm not paying any attention to it. So I hope we have time for our next show. <laughs> okay. No, um, I'm just kidding. It's always a good idea we're, not to pay attention to We're going to try to squeeze timer. this in in 45 minutes. Yeah. We're going to give it our best shot. Oh, but before we do, we got a super chat right. by Bruce. Early Merry Bruce. Christmas to all. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you, too. You're the man. <laughs> All right, so we're ready for the timer now? I think so, yeah. I'm well, let's do it. Timer. Four to five minutes. All right, so we're going to start with the two big shapes, and uh, the shapes actually kind of uh, bisect our composition, so I've already put some marks on the tape where I think the center is, but you want to find the center of your paper if you're working in a similar or the same proportion. And I think we're going to probably come out to about here, um, just based on the gap between the pineapple and the left edge of our picture plane. And uh, come down, leave maybe a little bit larger gap at the bottom of the picture plane, or the, about the same. Our pineapple is pretty central. Maybe there's a little bit larger of a gap here on the right uh, than the left next to our uh, edge um, of our paper. Oh, Teresa right, says, go. is that pencil hard or soft? The so, F pencil. Yeah, the F pencil is harder than an HB or a number two pencil by just like one step or a half a step. So the, on the pencil sort of scale or continuum, there's the HB pencil, then the F pencil, then the H pencil, and then they keep going from there, like 2H and so on. And I'm pretty sure the F, does that stand for fine? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. It's It, I, I th it might stand. Oh, oh, buddy says F stands for fine if okay, it's super. Faber-Castell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought I remembered seeing that. That it oh, was, what a uh, fine pencil! What a fine yeah, it's pencil a fun pencil, fun, fun. The mm -hmm. other ones are not quite as fun. And I'm pretty sure H stands for hard and B stands for black. Um, I don't like that nomenclature though. <laughs> it should be well, H. It's and weird. S. One one refers to a value, and the other refers to sort of the, uh, you know, the. Hardness or softness. Right. Those are two different. It's confusing. Those it's, are two different attributes, right? I would have done it differently. Yeah. Okay. So we got our two big shapes. Um, this is the shape for all of the, uh, for the plumage. So we're going to go ahead and start cutting cutting that out some now. Um, just kind of working up again and bumping up against this line. I should be able to kind of follow my way around, almost like, almost like a blind contour drawing, keeping my eyes on my subject. A lot. So this, this is interesting because Ashley is thinking he's drawing the positive space, but he's looking at the negative space. I'm willing to bet. Right. I'm looking at the little empty spaces and, and how, kind of how deep they go into the pineapple in places. So I think that's a good approach for something that's complex like this. Instead of thinking about each uh, I don't know what those things are called. We'll call them leaves. Let's, let's call, I think they're leaves. I think I'm, I feel safe calling them leaves. Uh, we're probably totally wrong. They're probably not leaves. They're probably some... I called it plumage. <laughs> that can't be right. Plumage, that's, those are feathers, I think that's right? a better description of, of what, what it is. I feel like plumage. 
It's probably hair. So yeah, I'm kind of imagining a line between these points, and it's not an imagination on paper. We've actually drawn it, and that's what I'm trying to imagine, um, where these points, uh, the tips of the points would be connected by, if they were connected by a straight line, or straightish line. Okay, so we're still working our way around. We've got to move kind of fast. It's not crucial that these um, leaves end up in exactly the right place. Just as long as they're close and they end up kind of having the character. Yeah, Edie that, says, that I'm having need. so much fun chatting with you guys that I'm missing the demo. And that, and and then the crying face emoji. It, just want to say someone reached out last week <laughs> and said, uh, I'm interested in your courses, but I want to make sure they're not like getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know how to take that. Well, no, no, no. What they're saying is, you know, we're, you know, there's a little bit of instruction here in getting sketchy. Yeah. Um, but really this is, this is meant to be entertaining and sure, fun. Sure, we're having fun here. We are. There is a little bit of instruction in here, but it's not. It's n nothing like what's in the courses and even really the live lessons. Which is, I mean, we talk during the live lessons, but it's not. Well, we go so slow in the live lessons. Right. There's plenty of time there's to talk about timer. what we're doing. There's not <laughs> yeah. a whole, right. There's no timer. Um. So yeah, uh, the the courses are um, definitely All right, got a, more a little structured. bit of negative space in there, so that's fun. All right, now. Um, I don't mean to interrupt, Matt. You can continue. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, I, that's just made me think of that with uh, what she said there, uh, because I'm sure that some of the things we say are quite distracting from the actual <laughs> drawing. I'm sure. Yeah. All right, so now we've got two patterns to handle. We've got the pattern in the pineapple itself and the pattern in the plumage. I'm going to keep calling it plumage. Now, so, yes, uh, that's quite... Quite a texture. Well, we're gonna we're gonna think about it as a as a crisscrossing stripes right now. So hopefully, um, I'm gonna draw a line, and then you see if you can identify it in the artwork. I see what you're doing here. I think that's also a good plan. And I think so, you've thought about this. Oh yeah, I spent a little time staring at this picture, and of course, there's a two ways at least I think to sort of see uh, this this pattern here. But I kind of see it this way. You could also see these pieces as stacked up in columns. Mm -hmm. Okay, you really could. Yeah, I, I like the way you're doing it with the lines here. I think that you're going to get uh, a better feeling of form going this direction. I hope direction. so. Yeah, I'm trying to use the, the lines that I feel like describe the roundness the best. You know, just for a just for a guide. Just, and of course, we're making, you know, making parallelograms right now, and we can't stick with that you've got the basic structure of the pineapple down there in just six minutes and i would call that a pineapple express <laughs> um okay dale says the plumage is called the crown of course it is uh, okay okay it and makes, steve makes also says sense. that the plumage is called the crown um and the crown is also a show on netflix yeah i'll be honest i lost interest yeah, well, my wife watches it, yeah. you know. So. My wife or watches did watch it, too, it. and I tried to watch it with her, but I lost interest a little bit and loved the first, uh, I don't know if it was season or two seasons, but, yeah. uh, you know. I always come in at The odd part points. that took place um, before I can remember, that's the part I was that's interested the part you in. Saw. Right, once it was, became like the news from my childhood and right. teenage years. And you're like, you know, you know Yeah, I remember, I, I know remember that. Happen. Yeah, okay. So, a uh, <laughs> lot to do here. Matt's trying to distract me. He wants to slow me down. But, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't. All right, now we're going to get into the pattern up here. And I think the way to do this, it's almost like a braided pattern. If you look right through the middle, there's like uh, two sets of uh, leaves that run through the crown that almost look like a braid pattern. So, that's what I'm going to uh, work off from uh, towards the outer edges, where we've already got a pretty good definition of all those leaves. We'll just have to make those leaves out here match up with the what we'll call i'm making up more words here the spine uh, of our pattern okay now these pointed parts kind of get a little bit longer and and a little bit more irregular as we work our way up this one's shaped like a wave and uh the bicycle lady says that the individual green stalks are called slips the slips mm -hmm. all right Better not drop them on the I'm floor. I'm going to try to remember. This one's an unusual shape. Yeah, with shape, the crown, I would always walk rest. in at weird moments when my wife was watching it, and then I would try to figure out who each character was. 
again. Oh, and it's well, because they're you know, played they by different actors. They kind of look like the real people, and then sometimes they kind of don't. Right, you know, right. They look like they're the real people, but there's something just not right about them. Right. I know what you mean, and some of the casting is... Edie says Sounds Pineapple Express others. sounds like the name of a two dollar and ninety nine bottle of bum wine. <laughs> it's actually something different. Um, Buddy right. says, "How so long?" We got our pattern through the middle. Go ahead. Buddy says, "How long do you study a subject slash picture you want to draw before you actually start?" Um, sometimes a few, just a few minutes, maybe. Um, sometimes. Uh, for these, sometimes we try or practice little sections just to see how the medium is going to translate. And so that can be uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah, sometimes a plan kind of comes into my mind anyway when I look at a subject and I have a good idea of how to approach it. Uh, but sometimes some subjects are a little bit more difficult to figure out a plan of attack. Um, but I think Ashley's reasoning for how he's going through this drawing is is spot on. I think it's the fastest way and also the most accurate way to capture this uh, pineapple here. Yeah, and the beginning of it, working around the edge, you know, really was a lot like a blind contour drawing. So if you don't do those, if that's not part of your warm-up routine, um, practice that because you can grab a lot of character um, when you draw kind of fast like that with your eyes just sort of tracing your subject. You can grab a lot of character without a lot of labor. Sandra says, am I allowed to say that the fruit part looks too small? Sandra, you can say whatever you sure. want, but if it's if it's inappropriate, I'm gonna fuck you. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the, uh, the fruit part does look it's like it's a little bit top. different yeah. than what's in the reference, but that's okay. Sure. Um, it, it, when you're creating a drawing or a painting, it, you're never gonna come replicate. Out a uh, what you're looking at exactly, and that's yeah. really not the goal. Maybe really, you need, need bigger shoulders. Well, yeah, I think, it, I think it's fine. I, right. We don't have time for that. Right. Um, <laughs> we got to keep moving. Right. It looks like a pineapple. Maybe in every pineapple, um, it's like a snowflake. Right. They're all just a little bit different. Well, so the point we is go the end result, not necessarily oh, how yeah. well it's replicated from a reference. Well, photo. you know, we're also going to just be approximating our colors, so. You know, there are going to be some deviations here in our, uh, you know, in our interpretation. We kind of have to run through our own filter, our brain, and uh, it's going to be an interpretation. All right, so I'm just trying to get a chunk, you know, these strange little shapes. They almost look like, some of them almost look like scales, you know, like fish scales. They're kind of rounded on the top, but a little bit pointier at the bottom. And I'm just trying to get one to land in uh, every one of my little trap, uh, little uh, diamonds. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, polygons, I guess. And I'm making some pretty bold marks for for a pencil, and uh, but uh, knowing that this is not going to be a pencil piece, um, but I'm going to do some pretty heavy erasing, I think, before we uh, get into the pen. Yeah, people are talking about eating pineapple or eating how long ago it's been since they've had pineapples, and pineapples are Gosh, very I very eat good regularly. They're very delicious. Yes, they're yeah we we eat them regularly in our house, and you can just cut them up. You know, and just keep them in the fridge and open it up and grab a few cubes of it out. Yeah, a lot of grocery stores do it. Uh, already cut them for you. you right. Oh, that's right. So you don't have to go in and I think Costco's are like and that. deal with that monstrosity in your. You don't have to do all that work in your uh, cart there. All right, and you can still kind of see uh, the curvy pattern um, it's, it's, that I've uh, been able to maintain while I concentrate more on the irregularity. Of these shapes and, you know it's a lot like a tessellation for those of you that like to make tessellations I do you know um, there's there's kind of similar these all kind of fit together like a puzzle and they're generally the same repeating shape uh, Melody asks um, what kind of weather are we having here and it is cold weather it's yeah. not freezing yet well, uh, it's freezing in the mornings as far as, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, It's below below <laughs> freezing, but it's not like what I mean. Like hyperbole freezing. Freezing cold yet, right. but it's supposed to be freezing cold in the next couple of days. All right. 
And at one point, it looked like we were going to get like 14 or 15 inches of snow. No, <laughs> you, no. You're the only person that told me that. No, but it was, it was true. <laughs> and I went and mentioned that to other people. Like, ah, oh, psh, clickbait. Yeah, nobody believed that stuff. <laughs> anyway, right. now it looks like we're going to have a bunch of rain. All Cold right, so we've got, uh, got a pineapple now. And, oh, my gosh. What kind of eraser was that? I grabbed that horrible, horrible pen, office works pencil that I had sharpened into a joke of a piece of lead. And, uh, and tried to erase I, you know, with it. You're, now you're I've got showing a, me that pencil, and I, it's making me want to use it. Because <laughs> the lead's so long. Because the lead's so long. I love the long it. He the can't, long his, it's like Pavlov's dog. He's just salivating so right now. There's so much control. It's like a sword. <laughs> it really is. You can hold it really low down on the Oh, well, on oh the my shaft. gosh. I, I grabbed it again. Yeah. You, see? Yeah. I can't help it. My brain wants to go to it. All right. There we go. Now, you, you know, got all these little, pretty these little star there. shapes in here. And in I bet middle. you're enjoying drawing that with yeah, that. I huh? do. I, I am. I wanted to make sure I didn't press down too hard and I've still drawn pretty darkly. So. Oh, thank you, Slippy and... Wheels, uh, giving us a super all chat. Right. Merry early Christmas all right, and super. happy early New Year to everyone. And you so too. You too. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Slippy Wheels. Well, I have, I have made it a dark erasure mark that I am going to have to. Didn't really want a shadow there, but uh, I don't know. Maybe there will be one. <laughs> all right, so I'm erasing all the excess graphite. Oh, my gosh. Almost went too far up You're there almost, at the top. It's be almost careful. gone. Be careful. It's okay. I'm going to hit it with some ink right now, and then, probably, and then it won't matter. And honestly, we're going to use the pen in a very sparing way here at the beginning and then go back to it a little heavier at the end. So let's see. We've got in this brand, we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2. I'm going to go with the point two, which is it's the I'll call it the large in this one, the extra large. So it's it's on the larger end, which is still a very fine point. All right, and what I'm going to try? Oh, oh too too bold, too bold. Let's go down. Let's go down another step. Okay, I like this one a little bit better. What I'm going to first do is just kind of grab a lot of these little tips. And also intersections, like places where we don't want to lose, uh, you know, kind of lose our uh, edges between the blades. So right now, just just tips, pretty quick little strokes, you know. So the the mark that I'm getting is a little bit finer than the tip of the pen would make if I, I moved at a slow speed. Um, Funky Groove Fifty is really concerned uh, that you are playing with swords, Ashley. He's, he says... Oh, we brought the swords Ashley, up again. Ashley, stay away from those swords. You know, it's funny you mention that. My kids are at home alone right now. My wife's also at work. With swords? And I told them, you know, I, same rules all the time, you know. Don't turn on the stove. Keep the door closed. Don't play with the swords. Right. Of course, my wife's probably home by now. Stay away from for the any of you uh, out there who are creepy and uh, and would pay attention and notice that I mentioned my kids are at home alone right now. Don't my, shoot I'm sure my wife's arrow, home right now. She's arrow. she's at home. <laughs> but in any case, right. So I told him I was um, you know going to be gone and, and mom would be home shortly. So just you know lay lay down the rules. And uh, and then I went in the living room. My son was strapping on a samurai sword. Strapping <laughs> it on. Right. I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's a novelty samurai sword. Should you check on them? I mean. Yeah. So I, I, told, I told him, I said, I had to add it into the rules, you know, when I'm gone. No, don't touch anything sharp, kitchen knives, novelty samurai swords. I mean, it's not even real. But, no, in uh, all fairness, your kids are older. Though. They're, yeah. They're yeah. of appropriate age to stay at home. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. They are now. Okay, there we go. So we've grabbed all those tips. We're not going to lose them when we get to the marker. Um, we'll be able to rediscover. Oops, there's one. Rediscover our. What are these shoots? What are these called again? Uh, slips. Slips. Yep. We'll be able to rediscover our slips. All right, and uh, kind of work similarly um, in our pineapple, and then we're going to jump into the marker. And we'll see how dark and the marker ends up making some of our parts. Um, and then we'll be able to better, uh, I guess, apply the pen again at the end for shading. So I am going to put some marks in for, for where these shapes intersect each other. Um, but there is quite a lot of darkness in the crevices between some of these shapes. So we'll probably have to go back and pump that up again. But we're going to work over this with the marker, and I don't want a whole lot 
these are listed as permanent, but they're I would call them permanent-ish because they are water-based. Mm. So so they might bleed a little they bit. They might bleed careful. a little bit, yeah. you know. So I'm trying. That's why I'm trying to put a small amount of ink down right now, just barely grazing the top of my page. Don't want any excess ink in there to bleed out. Buddy is asking, do I see it right that there is purple in the plumage? And oh, yeah. Yes, you're correct, because this was one of my photo references that I wanted to do. <laughs> and <laughs> I spent oh, a lot goodness. of time making this reference. Uh, I found the pineapple on its own, and then I really bumped up the colors a lot and played around with the color relationships and then created the background there. Um, so yeah, the colors are exaggerated, but that was purposeful. So, um, I'm sure Ashley will be able to have some fun with some of the colors there. Oh, I hope so. But yes, buddy. There are, you're seeing purple in the plumage. Yep. And my, my color, um, cloud blue, I think is kind of a lavender color. Mm -hmm. It's listed as cloud blue, but it's, it's, a, it's light indigo. I don't know if that's a thing. Okay. So any more? Oh, I just can't quit. I'm just afraid that I'm going to lose something when I erase the rest of the pencil. But it's time. Let's erase the rest of the pencil. <sighs> Not too vigorous. I don't want to smear anything. Yeah, I don't want to smear the ink. No. It's, you're, you're dangerous right there. Yeah. It's dangerous. I feel I, nervous. I know. I know. I'm a little nervous, too. <laughs> We should take a break. Everybody just take a break. June says, I predict you will now have two wheels next season, LOL. We might have two wheels, but it's we're not going to choose the photo references ahead of time, I think. I don't know. We haven't we're gonna, decided what we're going to yeah, do next season. It'll I would be, like some more freedom with the choice of medium, I think. Yeah. Like yeah. Th I've drawn with the same medium twice in a row, and, <laughs> and I'm happy with it. Um, but We've had uh, three ink and markers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So that's a, that's a lot. They've uh, they've really been showcased this season as a combination. All right. Did did miss a couple of tips there. And I can't remember the last time I drew with graphite, just pencil, you know? Right, right. I, I, I even su suggested to Matt, maybe we should just do pencil next season, <laughs> 10 of them, <laughs> because I miss it. So even though it's been fun to use uh, some media outside of my comfort zone. Maybe we'll just, maybe we'll just, uh, I don't know, we'll talk about it later, but uh, maybe we'll just have one wheel. Or maybe we'll have no wheels. We'll see. Maybe we'll have a dartboard. Maybe we'll have a, oh yeah, a whole different gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, we'll figure it out. So uh, for those of you who are new to getting sketchy and you know what we're doing uh, here, um, we'll, this season okay. is season nine. And when we conclude this season, we'll take a few weeks off and then we'll come back with uh, another season because this is a lot of fun. But in between that time, in between the seasons, I'll be publishing uh, videos regularly on YouTube. Uh, some of them are going to be time lapses from some of the course videos. Uh, but I also like to look at products and, and just do some one of lessons from time to time. So uh, even though Getting Sketchy will not be going on each week, I will be uh, more than likely putting up a video each week here on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Ashley's daughter could beat her brother with the drumsticks if he gets too <laughs> that, feisty with that's the right. swords. That's right. She's so had training. She knows how to swing those things now. All right. Let's see. I think we're going to start up here just to make sure all the, all that I did down here has a chance to be nice and dry before we go over it with the water-based markers. Up here, we're using alcohol. So I'm going to start with cloud blue, cloud blue. And I'm going to be looking for shapes of values, shapes of values. Okay, first of all, Susan says, Matt, you sound like you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm feeling better, I, way better than I was, uh, I don't know, five or four months ago or three months ago. I feel like I get a little bit better every day, but it's still there's still days when it's not great. But it does help to get an 11 millimeter stone out of your body. So that, that does help things a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm doing way better than I used to to be here recently, and um, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, but I'm not completely better, but I'm I'm definitely on I can, the mend. I can I can function and live each day. That's for sure. I still have trouble sitting for long periods of time, uh, but I'm I'm working through that. So uh, let's see. Oh gosh, uh, 
Now this color will get a little bit lighter as it dries. These alcohol-based markers. Jan says, to. the wheel, your audience loves to see you struggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an exciting season for you guys then, I guess. Yes. I can't wait to get to critique and talk about some of those struggles. We definitely have, I mean, this has really been very challenging for us this season. Uh, because of how we have said uh, how we set this up here I mean we did it to ourselves yeah we've even lost I mean I've lost a little sleep so uh, <laughs> alright there we go that's pretty good for our um, well, some of the lightest values that we can see in there that are the cooler colors so we're going to put our cloud blue down for a minute right, let's see Valerie has an interesting comment Con congrats on the 784,000 subscribers didn't know you would be this popular when you were in high school huh <laughs> Actually, if you would have asked the high school version of me, I would have said, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's funny. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's. I, I'm so thankful, guys, for all of your support, for all the subscribers uh, to the channel. Um, the YouTube channel has been up shortly after I started the website. So I guess uh, I've been a part of YouTube for 12 years now. Um, but it's just uh, a result of persistently putting out videos and of course you guys subscribing and liking the videos. It's been a slow and steady uh, growth period and, and that's kind of how I like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I am grateful for all of you guys uh, for getting us to the 784,000 subscriber mark. That is pretty exciting. Um, it's been many years yeah, i think since i have gotten the hundred thousand dollar or not a hundred thousand dollar the hundred thousand subscriber but plaque plaque yes That's and i really would like to have the gold one so uh, that means i need to get to a million subscribers for that to happen and i feel like that will happen one day uh, I'm not, you know, that's not necessarily a priority to me. My priority is to uh, put out good videos for you guys, for you guys to enjoy what you're watching, and and most importantly, for you to learn and grow so that it makes your life better. Uh, because that is that's the whole purpose uh, of learning new skills and things is to make your life better and more enjoyable. And when you are an artist, uh, no matter what your skill level is, and you create something that you're proud of and uh, something that you've put a bit of your soul into, you can't beat that. And that's one of the, uh, the great things about being human and living on this planet. All right, so w that looks like an interesting color. Is that aquamarine? Aquamarine, aquamarine. Yeah, aquamarine. So this is our super dark. Of course, these colors are slightly lightening a little bit. Love the shadows with the Brittany blue there. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a nice color. It is a nice color. It reminds mm. me of a lighter Payne's gray. Which paints gray, for those of you who know, is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> oh, it looks like I need a little bit of that Brittany blue back here. Thank you, Escarfin T. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Valerie says, thank you for your high quality and fun instruction. Keep it up and you will reach one million. Thank you for that, Valerie. Let's see. There's a really dark spot. There's a dark spot <laughs> Edie again. says, when you have a million subscribers, you can brag about being a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just looking for some of the darkest areas now and using this ultramarine. Um, yeah, that's right. The ultramarine in those areas. Let's see. Marva Dixon. Let's see. Some Marva of that Dixon is just right question. over top of some of the other colors that I'd already applied. That's fine. Okay, I went back, Marva. I saw that you had asked a question, but it wasn't in capital letters, so I didn't see it. But I, reading through here, I saw that your question is, is this recorded? Yeah, it's recorded by YouTube, mm. and it'll be available as soon as this broadcast is over. Um, and all of the other Getting Sketchy episodes are also available on YouTube, too. And there's more to this channel than Getting Sketchy, of course. There are uh, hundreds of videos on the YouTube channel that are uh, you know, individual lessons, uh, product reviews and, and so on and things that deal with the concepts of drawing and painting and being an artist there's a lot covered here uh, there's even more over at the website at the virtual instructor.com there are uh, thousands of videos I don't know how many thousands of videos but there are it's it's I think it's close to 3,000 maybe uh, I don't know All right. at least over 2,000 out here on the tips, 
on the lighter half of the plumage. I'm going to put down some of the uh, cloud blue, uh, but we're going to go over it with a yellow and kind of make our own green over here in that in that area. So that'll change a little bit through there. I love all the colors you're using in there. Well, thanks. Really like it. Looks and I like the blocky way you're putting the marker strokes in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm into that right now too. Yeah. Um, Edie says I like Payne's gray, but they should probably call it Payne's black. Yeah, it's Payne's gray is pretty dark, but that's the wonderful thing about it is that you can use Payne's gray to darken values and not use a black. So Payne's gray, for those of you who don't know, is a cool dark value. So it's a, a cool gray, but it's very dark. Um, and black can kind of have the tendency to make colors look flat uh, or an image look flat if you just use flat black in areas. So paints gray yeah. re create some really nice shadowed areas and, and darker values. All right. Now for our yellow chartreuse. Uh, Sandra says, there why should I consider using alcohol markers? And when you get a chance, if you'll take that swatch and uh, show her real quick. Which one? The swatch with the markers with the, with the alcohol-based and water-based oh, markers. here we go. This is a really good reason why you should use alcohol-based markers. Okay, alcohol-based over here, and then sort of the stripy water-based markers over here where, where they overlap. You can see they've gotten noticeably darker. Yeah, you can see the difference in quality. In, in each of these, it was just two strokes, and they do overlap, but the colors almost melted together. So it's a little bit, little bit smoother. All right. Um, let's see. Funky Groove 50 says, not to bash the course, but on YouTube alone, several art tutorials. Yeah, there's lots to learn on YouTube. I'm, I'm um, not saying that that's not the case. Uh, the thing about a sequential art course, though, is that it is set up in order uh, and, um, you know, it's a logically sequenced progression of instruction. You know, uh, I can say something about that because I've been yeah. l learning a language on my own for a few years. Yeah. And it's a little bit challenging to work without uh, a plan. You know, I kind of right. bounce it around in different from different website or uh, or YouTube video, and I do love the YouTube video options that are out there for us, yeah. us uh, language learners who are learning on our own. But being a teacher, I know what I'm missing. You right. know, and it's the organization, it's the structure. Yeah. So because I'm a teacher, I kind of know how it need how I, it needs to be structured, which is yeah. why I convince myself that I can do it on my own. But right. If I had a if I had a, a, a uh, an expert that was leading me, it would go a little bit faster. Right, and it's not just videos; there are also eBooks too, uh, illustrated eBooks that kind of walk you through the, the process uh, of creating each piece. And um, there's a lot more instruction involved in the courses than what I can put in a single YouTube video or even a series of YouTube videos too. So. All right, let's see here. We got. Uh, All right, now I'm going to get one of these water-based markers involved, and get a little bit deeper in some of these shadows uh, with some some green over top of the aquamarine, or just in other places over top of the Brittany blue. <laughs> uh, Brenda says, Matt, when would I be when will I be able to do an art project on my own without you telling me which colors to use in which order? <laughs> I'm getting there. Uh, you can do that now, Brenda. I, you know, uh, what? It, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. You know, all of the characters already had the attributes that they were looking for from the wizard. Yeah. Um, you guys already have that too. You just some for some of you, you just need the confidence to know that I'm okay with picking this this color or this combination of colors, uh, or uh, this is the way that I can approach this drawing. And if it's different the way than the way I would do it or Ashley would do it, that's completely fine. That's that's encouraged, in fact. Yeah. Um, so you know, once you've got a bit of knowledge and you start practicing, it's it's really about practicing and kind of reminding yourself of uh, kind of reminding yourself of what you've learned. So the more you practice, the more you reinforce what you've learned. It's just like if you think back to math classes, um, you, you know, you right. are taught a concept and then you do a ton of problems to support that concept. And the reason why 
it's effective to give lots of math problems, although I hated them, is because it is reinforcing what you learned and it's making, it's making it um, something that's easy for you to remember in your brain. But the same thing's true with, with art. Once you learn a concept and you reinforce it with activity, you're actually knowing it more and more. And um, sometimes you just need a little bit of confidence to know that you've, you've got enough uh, information to go out on your own and create your own. Well, answer. I used to have the exact same thoughts. You know, what am I going to do when I don't have my professor to come over and mention that something's out of proportion? Because yeah. every time they would, I would think, oh my gosh, I see it now. And how did I miss that? You know, but it just it hadn't stood out to me. So I'm probably still missing those proportional mistakes. I think you guys found one today <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's working out for me. So. Yeah, it's it's fine. That's totally fine. All right. Now, I'm thinking like a watercolorist down here in the bottom. So I'm kind of working from lighter color to darker color. I like to be in the yellow. This pineapple fades from it's it's yellow in this corner. If you think about it as a rectangle, it's green in this corner. It's orange in the middle, and then it's kind of wrapped with red along the bottom. So, I know. That's what we've got. Matt did that. He did that. I wanted that reference so bad. Um, <laughs> so I'm just I'm kind of working that way, and we'll get a little bit of a mixing and places along the edges. I'm going to hit this orange with a with yellow and come a little bit more inside of these shapes with the yellow, and hopefully it'll soften up the edge of the orange when we do that, where there's going to be orange. Edie says, it has a graphic look so far. Will you be blending the colors at some point, please? Um, a little bit here in the bottom, but only here in the bottom. I, I like the graphic look. I like the kind of blocky look, but it's Yeah, it's and we're going to be here. getting some, uh, some hatching in here, too, especially up here. These things are actually variegated a little bit anyway, and so I think it'll be cool to do some hatching, not, not sort of cross-contour, but along the contour, something we don't always do or choose. Uh, All right. Brenda so, says, thanks, Matt. I've learned so much and practice daily. Confidence is growing. That's fantastic. And Patsy says, have you heard from Maki? Uh, how did her USA shows go? I'm not sure how her shows uh, went, but Maki is definitely uh, doing some good stuff there. She had several, I think, U.S. shows here with her ballpoint pen drawings of her cats. And she also does uh, animations that kind of go along with that. So, um Nicole says, is there any support or guidance in your paid program for voice and style? We do talk a lot about style in uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the videos, mostly the live lessons, because that comes up with uh, a lot of people ask questions about that. And my philosophy on uh, not necessarily your voice, because voice is kind of more what you want to say with your art. And there are different types of art people create. Uh, some people create uh, more representational art, and it's really more about, um, you know, the presentation of the subject. And there's really, it really doesn't go much deeper than that. Uh, so we don't really do a lot of work with voice because that's kind of a personal thing. Uh, but we do talk a lot about style, and style is really uh, kind of like your signature. You know, you learn handwriting, and then you start signing at some point your signature and uh, that's kind of your unique way that you would uh, write well style is similar to that um, you may follow courses or tutorials uh, or just making your own art but there's definitely a way that you make marks that's different from other people and some people will try to deviate from that for some reason some people will try to make their style like someone else's and that's fun to learn from but eventually you have to let your own style come out and that's something that happens naturally over time after you've created things for a while and uh, you'll kind of get used to it like for me personally my style when I work with oil pastels is completely different than the style that that comes out when I work with colored pencils. And that's fine. That's the way that I make marks with those different types of mediums. And the same thing's true for you as an artist too, Nicole. You have a specific style, but you just need to let it slowly emerge mm -hmm. and then embrace it. Um, so that's how I feel about style. What, do you want to talk on that? Uh, I, I try not to think about it. Honestly, I mean, I think about specific 20th century movements in art, you know, seem to have, we're very style, stylistically oriented, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, I try to think about my own style as being my, my type of mark making and just kind of leave it there. That orange down at the bottom 
is hot. It's pretty intense. It's hot. Now, no, it I looks good. Gonna it, use, I'm um, saying some, hot like Something Paris over Hill. the whites. I'm going to use the brick beige. I've used brick beige up here a little bit. So all these little like marks down there are, are going to get hit with something. They're going to get hit with a, a little bit of brick beige. Lynn asked, the courses are in order on the virtual instructor question mark. So that's a question. Um, the modules within the courses are in order. The courses are not, they, they're probably different than what you may, you, maybe you've experienced other places. The courses are pretty in depth, uh, like you have 25 days for better to better drawings, for, for example, is it, it's made up of 25 lessons that are logically sequenced, sequenced that build on the lessons uh, before them. But you might go through 25 days to better drawings, for example, and then maybe you want to explore colored pencils. Oh, so then you might take the colored pencil course, and then after that, maybe three little birds with colored pencils. So you can go a little bit deeper into your study after you've started with some of the I don't want to call them beginner courses, but maybe the courses that are uh, are better courses for you to start off with. And those courses are like 25 Days to Better Drawings, The Secrets to Drawing, uh, maybe even the Guide to Graphite, which is all about graphite drawing. Uh, some of those courses are good places to start. And then you can go into the individual mediums. And then beyond the courses, there's also the live lessons, which are recorded in real time. So it's this, it's uh, creating a piece of art from start to finish. And it's not sketches like we create here on Getting Sketchy. They are complete pieces of art. Uh, so sometimes these pieces have, you know, 10, 15 hours in them. Uh, so oh, yeah. So there's different ways to learn, but uh, the modules in each course are definitely logically sequenced and in a specific, well thought out order. Um, but the courses themselves, you can kind of bounce around at whatever interests you. Uh, let's see. Sandra says, I'm impressed with this marker work. The way Ashley is coloring the fruit is beautiful. Thank yes, you. Now we, totally. I'm, you know, I, I'm a little nervous about the pen because we've got a good bit of pen to put in here and we've got five minutes left but i think we're gonna i'm gonna be able yeah, to do it or get real close because the pen will go fast but uh i feel like it's gonna be important edie says i just draw it the way i like it and however it turns out that's my style yeah that's there it. you go you got it that's it you don't need to try to force anything uh nicole says thanks oh yes i know i have a style very good uh and reminds you that there's six minutes left <laughs> Oh. <laughs> There's actually less than that oh. now. Uh, <laughs> uh, buddy says, Ashley, yummy. Love the sketch. Thank you. Yeah, that red back there with the oh, mystery it. marker really works. Yeah. That's the one that smells, Can you right? smell it? Can you Not smell yet, it? Okay. But it'll, I'm looking forward to it. It'll get, it'll it'll get, get over get here you. in a minute. I was using it earlier today, which is why I was in such a great mood when I got here. So it's a... <laughs> So, and I, I, I showed up with swerving snacks. all over the road. Right. I showed up with, with flaming <laughs> hot Cheetos. You know, each, that's true. Each one is just a little dopamine hit. It's like these make me happy. I'm going to travel with these. I never travel with I snacks. I don't think, I think that that's it's a like, downward spiral. I'm if you start tra traveling I'm with a travel bag of with flaming bag Cheetos. Of chips in my car. And, and while I was on the way over, it was dark. So I, I dropped three of them on myself. And oh I, couldn't, I couldn't find them. And it's First like, oh, of all, I can't believe you're cheetah. eating food in your car. <laughs> Second of all, I can't believe you're eating food in your car while you're driving. It's because I'm on and vacation. It doesn't bother you that you <laughs> dropped flaming hot Cheetos on your on your floor. I know. Oh, no, no. I, I got them. I remember oh, okay. there were three. Remember I remember there were, there were three. It's like when I get out, I've got to find all three. You of didn't these. crunch them. Right. Huh? I'm not going to crunch them into the into the carpet. So I right. allowed zero eating in the in the car. All right, now we need chartreuse and I believe brick beige. Brick beige, which has bottom. nothing gonna, to do with bricks. Right, we're going to layer these here on the bottom. I can't believe that's a Prismacolor color and it's brick beige? Yeah, that's the name of it. Oh, come on, Prismacolor. We can do better than that. That should be called peach or something. I'm sure there's a, there's already a peach. but <laughs> Yeah, who whoever named it no longer works for the company, but they already probably produced it. They <laughs> printed so many labels. So maybe like, their name is brick. <laughs> Bricks beige. Yeah. Okay, I'll make sure I've got the right one. And of course, you know, it'll lighten up a little bit as it dries, but it's a pretty good approximation, I think, these two colors <laughs> stacked on top of each other. Edie says, just don't drop flaming hot Cheetos into your underpants. <laughs> I'll be sure not to do that. <laughs> All right. So um, the, the marker's pretty much in place. And we've got some time for some pen work. So let's get to the end of that. So you can't tell, probably, but in the reference, um, there's actually like little lines or stripes already. 
Um, so I'm just going to uh, keep going with sort of the direct the direction of. Oh, I smell the marker now. You, it, it did it make, make it across the room? Okay. Uh, sort of the contours, direction of our shoot's contours. Whew. I know. Oh, gosh. I'm going I'm to have to go stand outside and get some fresh air after this one. <laughs> Brenda says, looking beautiful. Uh, Teresa says, you guys are costing me money. I said no more mediums than bought a set of 12 <laughs> markers. Having so much fun with these in these sessions, but missing a decent selection of colors. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, Teresa, I just bit the bullet and I bought the whole Prismacolor set. And I haven't had to replace one marker. Um, well, so I guess because you've got so many choices, you don't overuse so any color. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's some real dark marks uh, between some of these shoots. Yeah, Edie, the fumes are pretty strong just from that one marker. There's something up with that marker. That is not... Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't use, have to use the whole set, but I did cover about 50% of the composition with it, so it's used pretty extensively. Yeah, Brent does art, says adding the background colors mattered big time, and it did because oh, yeah. it added uh, value back there in the background instead of having that right. white some of these areas were were dark and now they're the lightest areas right and they, they needed to be but they felt dark at first the colors felt really bold without that red and they're they're bold to be sure but they felt really bold without that red in place the value is the darkness or lightness of of color it's one of the seven elements of art um and value is relative so we understand the values in a piece or in a drawing based on the values that are around it. And when we had that white around the values on the plumage, like Ashley said, it looked dark. But once Ashley put a darker value around it, then those areas looked light. So now he's making those areas darker uh, to make more sense with the value that needs to be there. Oh, four seconds. One sec, pencils down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pencils down. Pencils down. Terry is hoping that a Santa Claus will bring line. Prisma Color Premiere 150 colored pencil sets. Maybe so, Terry. Maybe so. I hope everybody gets what they want for Christmas. And I know that the holidays can sometimes be um, very festive and very happy. And I know that for um, some people, they're never festive or happy for all, all kinds of a wide variety of reasons. So, Humbug. I know. So if, you, if the holidays get you down, then uh, this one's for you. You, well, you and me, we'll hang out in the tropics. Together. The members minute goes out tomorrow, and I always record the members minute on Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though it goes out tomorrow, and the quote this week for the members minute is: "The best holiday gift you can receive is realizing what you already have." So uh, maybe we should just all be thankful for what we already have, because. For most of us, it's so much. Yeah, just being able to be thankful. Try to be in a place where you can see the world that way. So it's a good goal. Sometimes it's hard to see all those blessings. Trust me. Yeah, when you're so close to them in your own life, sometimes you miss them. All right, just getting a little bit more darkness in here. Now, I know I need a shadow down here. Susan says, somebody get Ashley a new red marker for Christmas. I may have to, because if I light a match in here, the whole place is going up. <laughs> <laughs> that smell. I know, it is so strong. Oh, I should have brought my Mr. Sketch markers. I, I had another opportunity. To Those bring are the my, ones that smell. Right, to bring my smell good markers, and I, I failed like, again. Right. The smell ones, like fruit. The ones that smell like blueberry or grape. What? Who? Who thought of Getting that? Ske Mr. Sketch. They're sitting around thinking, "How can we get kids to eat right. markers? Let's train um, kids now to smell markers, right. or or eat them." I mean, they smell. I remember when I was younger, and the the, the smelly markers were a, a you know a more 
more uh, conspicuous thing. Yeah. Um, I, I remember, you know, wanting to lick the markers, <laughs> especially like the blueberry. <sighs> 80 says, I'm thankful for what I have, but I would be even more thankful for having more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, right? That's what we all think. I think uh, Prince, or the artist formerly known as Prince, once said, I've been to the mountain, I've been to the top of the mountain, and there's nothing more to see. Yeah. And I think what he's him, saying Him and is, King Solomon, right? Uh, did King Solomon say that? Basically. Okay, well... The quotes Prince I've read is Solomon. always the artist formerly known as Prince. Right. right. Uh, but anyway. Um, What's his real name? It's like probably like Daniel or something. I don't know. Well, it's it's got to be out there somewhere. I'm a fan of Prince, by the way. I like Prince. Oh, I love Prince. Back in the I 80s, was, you know, you had to pick. Some, yeah. some days you had to pick. Was it Prince or was it Michael Jackson? I don't know. Prince is different they, from Michael they, Jackson. They're very Prince different. Plays lots of but they were they were both kind of coming up at the same time. But. I, I, I mourned a little bit when Prince died. But anyway, that, that quote uh, it basically means, uh, you know, Prince had everything. Um, yeah. Or, or at least most of us would it think appeared, he has everything. It appeared so. But there's, there's what we would think would bring us happiness at that point. It's not necessarily what would bring us happiness. So having more really just a lot of times means that you want more. Um, Shelley says, have, value in what you yeah. have more than what you don't have is the key to happiness very good all right well i we can call this one done at any time you know the the whole pineapple needed a bit a little bit darker so because i've done some line work in the top um i went ahead and did a little bit of hatching with the orange marker over all of these and it's a pattern that's not really there but just having some line work in there even with the marker i think helped to harmonize with the line work of the pen um in the top of our pineapple so definitely it looks absolutely cool. fantastic yeah, i think it's real it's, it's a kind successful of neat. drawing yeah um, thank you and would you yeah, I, what i love about this uh, is that we've got people researching things and know the answer to things mm -hmm. that we don't know okay. and would you know that prince's real name is prince Rogers Nelson. How about that? His yep. that is his real, his real name. name is Prince. It's Prince. Yep. He didn't change his name. I love that. I'm gonna go from now on. I'm gonna be the artist formerly known as Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that because Matt's your real name and I Prince know. was his I, real yeah. name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is great. For those of you who have never seen it, though, I would really encourage you to look up on YouTube or something. When Prince was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah. and played that incredible guitar solo uh, that was part of the song uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Oh, really? I gotta, I'm going to have to look that up myself. absolutely yeah. incredible. Uh, Prince He was fantastic. Shreds guitarist. It. Maybe the shreds best. Shreds it. I of mean, it day, is of his unbelievable. Day. Yeah. Um, hmm. So look that up. You won't regret it if you like any music at all. <laughs> Um, if you like music, you're going to like this. Yeah, I can't remember who. I think I want to say Tom Petty was in there, too. I mean, it was... Same year? Yeah. Like they I, were inducted in they the were same all, year? They're, you know, they all play oh, at the end. Oh, you know what? Yeah. I, maybe I have seen that. Yeah, it I is. I think I have seen uh, that It is now. incredible. Um, have my fingers healed, please, Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not entirely. But I will tell you, I did replace the bumper on... Uh, and, and various parts on my daughter's car. Um, All right. So uh, she's back in action. There's one more piece that I've got to put on, but uh, but you can't really tell. So, but my hands are almost healed. I actually probably need to put one band aid on one finger, but I don't know just if I'm to spare do the rest yeah, of us. Just to, it's not from your bad. hideous wound um, in the next show. Brent does art says, Matt, I watch that video often. It is truly amazing. It really is. Uh, I mean, you have a greater appreciation for, for prints if you've never seen that before. If you know about music and uh, you can have a great appreciation for, I mean, he just comes out of nowhere, just ripping it. Um, all right, I guess we'll. All right, it looks fantastic. I guess that's it. Wonderful. That's it for the season until we uh, well, until we get a chance to critique these. Kind of. Um, Is that right? Yes, we've we've got uh, next week. We will be spending time with friends and family, and I hope you are doing the same thing, getting ready for uh, New Year's. And um, the week after that, we will actually be back 
to take a look at all the drawings that we created for this season of Getting Sketchy. And this season has been pretty wild um, because we were using the two wheels mm -hmm. and the one wheel told us what medium we were going to use and the other media, the other wheel told us what uh, photo reference we but, were going to use. But each week, one of those wheels nearly broke our heart. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. yeah. We had, uh, you know, we had pictures we'd chosen around a medium, probably. Your lights are on. Oh. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was going to switch yeah. to Ashley and he was going to look like he was uh, <laughs> the, what's the, the ghost toxic face. Adventure? Ghost faced Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to look angelic. Mm, yes. Mm. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so I don't know. I'd like a little bit more freedom with the medium choice next week, but I kind of liked um, not necessarily uh, choosing my subject because it, I did draw subject matter that I probably wouldn't have chosen, especially early on while I was working with organic. Well, this is organic subject matter also. Mm -hmm. So I guess all of my images, save the cafe front, were organic subject matter. So right. I think that stretched me a little bit. Yeah, in a got you out of comfort zone. In a positive way, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. And some of the folks who were in that induction thing, um, mm -hmm. USF Girl 07 tells us Tom Petty, Jeff Lynn, which is from Electric Light Orchestra, oh, yeah. uh, George Harrison's son, and of course Prince are all in there. So uh, pretty awesome. And Keith says, hardly seems any time since you were drawing the fly, which was the first drawing of this season. Yeah. So uh, yeah, very true. Tom Flaws. Um, yeah, it went by fast. Yeah. But we've got one more show uh, for this season. And then, like I said, we'll take a few weeks off and we'll be right back at you and we still haven't forgot about maybe coming up with a painting kind of show it won't be mm -hmm. live but uh um, but that might be an option in the future coming in 2023 and i don't know if i said it on a live lessons or getting sketchy last week even even number of years usually have crazy things happen to me yeah and so you're um, looking forward to 2023 yes 2023 odd number of years great things happen all right so uh, this year's been, you know, I've had all kinds of crazy things happen to my body mm -hmm. um, and uh, just just life in general. Uh, so I'm looking forward to 2023. <laughs> uh, but before Where? we get there, of course, uh, we've got a very special holiday with Christmas uh, coming up. And I wish you all the merriest of Christmases and uh, Happy New Year, too, because we won't see you until the other side of the new year, unless we're going to see you in just a minute for the live lessons. Uh, Ashley, do you have anything to leave the people with? Um, I don't think so. I believe you summed up my feelings about the end of the year also. So um, friends and family, just uh, stay warm. Remember what's important, and we'll see you on the other side of the new year. Absolutely. Um, have a great Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Just be happy. Um, <laughs> and sometimes that's hard to do. But, uh, you know, sometimes the things, the emotions that we feel, sometimes those are not necessarily things that happen to us. Those are decisions that we make. So I feel like sometimes we can choose to be happy, even though sometimes it's difficult to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Just like that Tom Petty song, Walls. Yeah. Some days are diamonds, some days are rocks. I don't think I said that in the right order, but mm. uh, anyway. It's a matter of perspective uh, there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but every day can be a day that we're happy. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and sign out for this evening, and we'll see some of you on the live lesson in just a minute. Good night. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.